Would it not be impossibly excellent if you could just jumpstart your car using the latent energy trapped in a notionally flat battery? Or even one of these babies? Yeah, let's do that. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. One of the most frustrating things about having a flat battery is there's typically plenty of energy to do the job left in your notionally flat battery. The battery has merely lost the capacity to deliver that energy fast enough to crank the engine. And it's very frustrating for car makers too, believe it or not. All that expensive R&D to iron out all those complex interactions, all of that feedback to support, and yet, two of the least reliable aspects of the modern car continue to be two components that the car maker does not actually make. The tyres and the battery. They're famous for letting you down. And here in Australia, it's potentially pretty easy to be in the middle of nowhere when this kind of thing occurs. And that's generally not fun. I mean, I've had fun from time to time and that's not it. So basically, with a flat battery, you have more than enough energy, but not nearly enough power. That's the basic physics type problem. If you're hazy on the science here, brace for impact. We're going propeller head. Yes. People say it takes 250 amps to crank an engine, but what they really mean is 250 amps at 12 volts, because volts times amps equals watts. Obviously named after James Watt, Scottish genius engineer, the steam engine dude. And that worked out quite well, 1736. Look it up. So 250 amps times 12 volts equals 3,000 watts or three kilowatts. Maybe more, maybe five or even six kilowatts just to crank the engine. It kind of depends on a bunch of factors like the compression and the number of cylinders. Physics in the beer garden, okay? If you are hazy about the distinction between energy and power, here it is. Your punching bag hanging off the ceiling is a system in equilibrium. Gravity is tugging it down, the chains are pulling it back, and essentially it's not going anywhere. You can displace it, and it doesn't require very much energy to displace it. Just a little bit of a push like that gives you a fair old whack of displacement, and then you can take that away. It'll swing for a bit, and because of friction in the chain and all that kind of stuff, eventually it will return to rest, kind of like that. But there is a second way to displace it, isn't there? Opportunity could knock. You could imagine Donald Trump's face magically appearing before you now, and you might want to displace it more quickly. Same energy between the two events, right? Because roughly the same displacement. The difference is in the time domain, how quickly the energy is delivered. And in a physics sense, that is exactly the difference between power and energy. Power is the time rate of change of the input of energy. So the same energy quickly equals a lot of power. And the same energy kind of slowly not so much. And this plays out in all kinds of different ways, right? If you can run to the top of a 10-story building quickly, you are powerful. If you can only just walk there over several hours, not so much power, but the same kind of energy in both cases. Electrical, mechanical, it's all the same. This is your flat battery, you know, and this is your battery channeling El Presidente and his failure to speak in complete sentences.
So here's the basic problem with an allegedly flat battery. You've got heaps of energy and not nearly enough power. Like the lights all still work and you could run the radio for hours and even recharge your phone. But you'll still be in the corner penthouse of Nowhere Central, which is not quite shit creek, but you can smell it from there depending on the prevailing wind. You can even hear what is perhaps the most frustrating click of all time, which is the solenoid grabbing the little tiny drive gear on the starter motor and engaging it with the ring gear on the flywheel if you attempt to start. But the battery simply lacks the power to crank the starter against the resistance of the engine. And out here, in beautiful northwest anal sex itself, you're screwed. Would it not therefore be impossibly excellent in this moment of need if you had at your disposal a device capable of absorbing the electrical energy in a trickle and then turning it around and punching it back out in a high power starter friendly discharge? This is the Ozcharge Rescue Mate 1000, the big brother of the Rescue Mate 500. It's not a battery. It's full of capacitors and mad electronic voodoo. And this allows it to suck up energy slowly and punch out power fast. So then I thought to myself, how sick can a car battery actually get before it is completely useless in this context? How about if the voltage drops from 12 volts down to just five and the cold cranking current down from 250 amps to just two amps? I think you'd agree that's a pretty sick car battery, but a very good test for the rescue mate. Five volts at 2.1 amps. This is either a decent USB power supply or a near-death car battery. There's no way you're ever going to crank a car with a battery like this. A 12 volt car battery needs to deliver three kilowatts. That's 3000 joules of energy for every second that you crank the starter. Good luck doing it with this. But when you think about it, there's actually quite a lot of energy built up in a battery such as this. This one is 6.6 .6 amp hours at five volts, which is 33 watt hours of energy. That's 24 kilojoules. Now, if your car needs three kilowatts to crank the starter, this battery has enough energy locked inside it, hypothetically, to crank that starter for eight seconds. If only you could release that energy fast enough, which generally you cannot, problematically, unless, of course, something goes horribly wrong. Studio 2.0 coming along nicely. Everything takes longer than you want. Anyway, that what could go wrong scenario with the batteries is exactly why airlines are as twitchy as hell about having umpteen of your batteries on board in the hold. There is a shitload of energy down there. If there's a malfunction and it all escapes fast, it could get quite ugly or at least interesting. Almost all of those batteries are built down to a price in China too, so there's that. And there you are in an aluminium tube flying at 0.8 mark, six miles above the ground, bitching about the shitty food and the bitchy service while you should be riffing air guitar because you're alive in the 21st century and therefore you are allowed to practice high altitude subsonic voodoo. Hashtag science rocks. <laughs> Unfortunately, in the context of symphony in Jumpstart Flat, this is kind of the Mr. Puniverse of getting the job done. 10.5 watts, which is about 1 25th of the power you need to crank that engine. So I guess the options are just get, I don't know, 50 of these and some wire and a soldering iron and go 100% MacGyver or get yourself a rescue mate. So let's see exactly how long it takes the Mr. Puniverse of USB battery banks to amp up the rescue mate. Ultimately, using the anorexic USB battery bank, we're good to go in about 17 minutes. It's dead easy. The unit says ready when it's uh, ready, and once it's ready, it'll hold the charge for several days. 
Good safety tip for this process, right? Shut down all of the electrical ancillaries like the lights, the radio and the HVAC before you jump start your car because you want as much power as possible going into the starting process, right? That makes sense. And then you should just wait for the run mode to time out before you disconnect the unit. And that's kind of more for your safety than anything else because devices with a crude energy, electrical, mechanical, whatever, if it's got energy, it deserves respect. And full disclosure here, right? OzCharge contacted me and they said, please review our cool product. And I said, okay, but they're not paying me to talk them up at all. I kind of like it when organizations are confident enough about their product to roll the dice in exactly this way. Because I do have this worrying tendency to say what I really think about stuff. You might have noticed, I'm very keen on bullshit filtration. At least then you know exactly what I actually think, right? The Rescue Mate is simply better than a battery-based jump starter. Batteries go flat over time and you have to ask yourself, are you really disciplined enough to recharge yours religiously every two to three months? Balance of probabilities, yours is gonna be dead flat just when you need it most. So it'll be exactly like having a flat spare tire, only electrical and just as convenient. Because hey, out of sight, out of mind. You don't even have to carry the rescue mate around charged up. You just pump it up when you need it. You just clamp them on and then what it does is it sucks residual energy out of your notionally flat battery. When you're ready, you press run and it's capable of punching it back a whole lot faster. Alternatively, you can charge it up yourself using the 12 volt power outlet in the vehicle and also by USB. And both those cables are in the box. Of course, if you're plugging it into the big battery up the pointy end, the Rescue Mate is electronically protected against you being an imbecile. It's just not going to work if you get the polarity wrong. But hey, red goes with red. How friggin hard is it? It's virtually idiot proof. Virtually. If you're in the trade, you know, with people darkening your door with their flat batteries frequently, the Rescue Mate is another thing that you don't have to remember to charge up. You just walk out and charge it up off the customer's notionally dead battery, you get them running and you look like a bit of a hero. There's actually a serious side to looking like a bit of a hero because commercially, this is an opportunity. You might sell a battery or a reconditioned alternator on the spot in this case, but you might also grab that customer for the next several years because you solved their problem and you did it quickly and efficiently and you looked like you knew what you were doing. And I guess if you're just a civilian, stick one in the boot, right? Because it's a no brainer when you weigh it up against the inconvenience of being stranded alone just once out there in Shitsville. Of course, there might be the odd scenario where your battery is properly dead, you know, shot six times in the head by your ex-wife who set up overnight with a Tango 51 and waited until 3 a.m. to make her move. They're generally not big on forgiveness, I note. Anywho, if your battery really is as dead as Donald Trump from the neck up, you just plug the rescue mate into somebody else's 12 volt power outlet for a couple of minutes, that's all it takes. People are rightfully twitchy about offering you a jump start. I get that. They don't want to blow up their own car's computer with some sort of spike. This, however, is a lot easier for a good Samaritan to agree to. Except of course, here in Sydney, 
where most people are busily training for the synchronised, unfriendly asshole marathon in Tokyo. Hashtag visit Shitsville, yeah! According to the manufacturer, the rescue mate's design life is 10 years plus, which is longer than an equivalent battery pack, and it's also lighter to hoof around the place. Minimum voltage to charge up is between 3 and 15.5 volts, which is essentially a pretty wide range of trickle charging options. I'm John Cadogan. The Rescue Mate is dead easy to use, as well as being a real step up from a battery based jump start pack. And if you can find, if you're lucky enough to find a hot cheerleader with a flat battery, a rock hard Rescue Mate could work even better for you than having a puppy. And having a puppy normally works quite well. I mean, it's not as effective as a benzodiazepine martini. But it's close. So there's that. Ozcharge.com.au for more info. Link in the description below and on the website as well. It's a pretty good product. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>